Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Hope everybody's doing well. About to get this interview with V Brown ready soon. Just waiting for you guys to really come in. And we can start everything right about now. Hey y'all. Hopefully you guys can hear me good. Try to make sure we get volume and everything together. <clears throat> Alrighty, V, I see you on here. Let's get you on. Hopefully we get everything going. How you doing? Hey, hey, what's going on? How you feel? Feeling good. How about yourself? I won't complain. I'm blessed to be here for one more time. Hey, Liza. <laughs> hey, all. Hey, Terrence. I see all you guys on here. Hey, y'all. Forgive me for wearing shades. I don't usually do this for interviews. Is uh, it's all good. Hello. Mm-hmm. Puffy. <laughs> just a little puffy. I'm not going to give y'all that right now. <laughs> uh, well, I, this is my special guest here. R&B soul singer name here named uh, V Brown. Introduce yourself to everybody. I am V Brown. And uh, as uh, K Took said, I'm an R&B singer right here from uh, Philly. Um, I also do some acting. Um, yeah, it's just just good, happy to be here right now. <laughs> a little That's nervous. Don't <laughs> no, worry, she's gonna be fine. <laughs> All right, so we just want to make sure we get everything together. I'm trying to get myself together. You know, you're getting yourself together. Okay. okay. So, if, since you said you are a singer, and you say you did some acting, mm -hmm. what made you want to get into the industry and everything? Um. I've I've loved acting and singing probably since I was a kid, and uh, what made me take it seriously? Uh, some some downtime. I said, uh, you know, while, while I have the time, I'm gonna go back to something that I actually enjoy, instead of tripping over the the here and now and the and all the things that that I couldn't control. Um, some 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 losses over the years and stuff like that. And like I said, I got that downtime and I started to focus on myself and the things that I really enjoy. And um, that, was, that was music. So, okay. yeah, I started to take that seriously again, probably around 20, 2013. I started doing some acting, answering some, uh, some background uh, acting calls and stuff like that. And um, eventually made my way to some local theater productions. Okay. Um, uh, some independent films and um, major films. Uh, actually, any, been blessed to be on. Any, oh, any, any of um, the stuff you've done acting wise, you can tell us that you've been in, or maybe some people might have heard. Um, let's see. There is. Uh, I'm gonna try and think in chronological order. Maybe I won't forget. <laughs> uh, there was uh, another man's treasure. Okay. Uh, there's a web series called The Drive. Um, you can find it on YouTube under AK-47 Productions, The Drive. Okay. Um, if I played a thug. <laughs> if you know me, you'll be like, what? <laughs> How and why did you get that part? They saw it. <laughs> they saw something. So uh, there was The Drive. There was a, oh, a great film that, that, that's near and dear to my heart. Hey, Frank, um, uh, called Love Don't Live Here. Love spelled L-U-V. And um, that was like a real, that was a labor of love for the director and writer. And it was a labor of love for the actors as well. Um, and it was a passion project, uh, very close, near and dear to a lot of us. Um, touchy subject, um, friendship. And um, when you're down and out, when you get sick, uh, the character contracted HIV. And he's, it's like, you know, who's, who's going to be there for you when the chips are down? So it's one of those those kind of films, and it's it's on some streaming outlets. It's just making its way to a lot of streaming outlets now. So you can probably find it on Netflix. Um, oh man, there's a um, 
streaming app. It's a new streaming app that's geared toward the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I'm having a brain fart about it right now, but it's, you can probably find it on my page. I think I posted it. I was like so hyped. I saw the ad for it. I'm like, oh my God, we're still, we're still doing things with this movie. And that was like almost five years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still out here making noise. Um, nominated for awards and everything. And um, what else is there? Uh, equity. I actually got to be on set with the likes of Alicia Reiner from Orange is the New Black. Um, had a good talk with her. Got some, got some good nuggets from her about this business. Um, what else? What else? Uh, backgrounds on Creed. Uh, Creed Two. I'm sorry, Creed Two. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Uh, some some theater productions. Um, I worked multiple times with uh, Run Boy Run Productions. There was an award winning theater production here called Underground Episodes. Uh, we went to places in New York. Um, did uh, some festivals here in the city. Um, yeah, we, we did we did some good things. And I'm hearing, hey, Kyle, um, I'm hearing that they, they want us to do it again. <laughs> they want us to do it again. Wow. So I would be more than happy to do that. I played a, uh, a pissed off, underpaid transit security officer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if, you, if people out there <laughs> take public trans. Had at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you take public transit, you know, like, people give them a hard way to go. And they, they don't make enough money for y'all bull crap. Y'all y'all leave them run a cop alone. Let them, just let them do his job. <laughs> right. And uh, then, oh, my gosh, there's so much more. Uh, Zeros, it's a it's an independent film that just came out. Um, it's a bro comedy thing. And I was just a background uh, extra doing some dancing. These guys are wondering, like, why their friend is going to this gay club. But he's like, he's not gay. He just loved like the the music and the vibe and everything that's always going on in this club. And he he just came to get his life. He don't bother nobody. But you know, I'm one of the extras, and you can see me do like a double take, like <laughs> so. <laughs> he's looking like wow. Now now he and I we've been friends for a little bit, you guys. So if you guys see me looking surprised and everything, because a lot of this we haven't really talked about. This is the first time we're actually talking about all this. Right. Right. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Actor. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit. And um, oh, uh, when when I started to like really, really dig into music, I actually got involved with a um, a local revival of uh, Smokey Joe's Cafe. Okay, I know. That's uh, I was only supposed to do like a, a little small part, probably two numbers, but uh, someone had to drop out for unfortunate reasons, and um, I knew all the the songs. I knew most of the choreography. Sad part is I couldn't fit the wardrobe, <laughs> so Things they happen. had to make a yeah. They, they were they, they were accommodating right, okay. big bros. You know my shoulders is wide out here, <laughs> but um, they incorporated me into a lot of the numbers. And um, man, my like hats off to like people in Broadway and like the, the theater business who take this, live this, breathe this. It's serious. It's serious because I know you have to be on point lines. You have to know the choreography, everything, you know, your point, you know, where you have to stand at, like, your points. Yes. So, I yeah. trust me, when I when I had interviewed Shawnee, so trust me, she told me a little bit about that, so I know. Yeah, absolutely. It, that's a whole different kind of discipline there. But that, I think that was, like, the moment of truth when I realized I can I can probably do this. I can do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> one night I went out there with my pants tucked in my socks. <laughs> I come spinning out there like <laughs> oh, my pants is tucked in my socks because you know quick changes, quick changes. So oh, I'm yeah. trying to think quick. quick. So I'm like, I'm gonna rip these off. My pants is gonna be stuck in the socks, but I'm gonna pull them out when we go out there for that next number. No, <laughs> that's how, especially when it comes to singing and everything. Like especially when people go on tour and they have to do those quick changes too. I know that's no joke either. No joke. Well, Let's get to your music because I know you have. I think is it two albums or two EPs or is it album EP or, have or two albums? One EP and one full length album. Mm -hmm. um, the EP came first. That was called uh, "Love Is Love." I don't know why my phone keeps going black. It doesn't usually do that when I'm on live. No, you I'm live. I'm telephone. I'm live. We, we see you. Don't so work. You like you can't see me. I'm gonna still let you know what's going on. So you good. All right. <laughs> but uh, the first EP called Love is Love, um, that was the experiment. 
And I wanted to make sure that it came from an honest place, that I wrote it from the perspective of a gay black man in his late 30s. And uh, <laughs> what are you saying? I'll get to those comments later. Y'all behave yourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see who that is. But I'm um, written from the uh, perspective of a gay black man. And um, the message behind it is that although this is the kind of stuff that I know about, I, that I've lived and some of my friends have gone through, um, <clears throat> I wanted the message in it all to be enjoyable for everybody and to just let people know love is love. I want you to get into the to these songs before you realize, oh, oh crap, he's talking about a dude, but too late, got when, you already. You know you like the song. <laughs> when did, sorry to interrupt you, when did that come out? That came out, uh, where are we? We're in 2021. Last year, January 2022. 20, I think I did it on New Year's Day. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that came out on New Year's Day, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about, this, what about the second project? The second project was Friday night. Now, before old Rona came in and, and, and messed everything up, like, I thought I was going to have a good time with this record. Um, I think I, I started working on that before I even released Love is Love. Um, my engineer, uh, producer, shout out to Maddie B. Mobley, and my cousin Mimi JK. They help me put these things together. They help put me all together in this thing. Uh, they keep me going. Like I quit like every other week, but <laughs> they're in my ear, as well as my partner right there. Hello. Um, uh, get out of bed. No. <laughs> um, they, put, they help put all this stuff together and um, help keep me together. And like I said, I thought we were going to have a good time with this record. We were going to get it to places. We were going, you know, do a little dancing and, and you know, get get me out of my square box. And, you know, as people like to tell me, relax your shoulders, Brown. Relax your shoulders. I was, I was supposed to cut loose and things like that. But uh, that thing came in and it it really sent me on an emotional roller coaster, you know. Uh, how, not knowing. How did that make you feel like creativity wise when you were doing your music? I got stuck. Because it was, it was a vibe that was like way up here, mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden, you know, things started happening. My, uh, my focus, I was unfocused, and um, so I said, you know what? If this is where we at, I mean, we got a couple upbeat joints on there. Um, I probably recorded a uh, maybe sixteen, sixteen songs, and there's probably eleven, ten or eleven that made it. So. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, when, when the energy ain't right, don't do that to yourself. So it kind of, it gave you a, a bit of everything. It's a couple uh, fast tracks and a few love songs. Um, so it's a little something for everybody. I mean, and that's that's really what Friday night's all about. You just never know what's going down on a Friday night, where you might end up, what you might be doing, who you're doing it with. <laughs> so, okay. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to ask this question. And I know a lot of people are gonna probably ask, probably gonna who probably wanna think in it. Paco probably didn't want to say it. What makes you as an R&B singer your sound different from what's out there right now? Hmm. <clears throat> um. My voice. Period. Uh, I I got in my head also during that creative pro pro process. Um. I was like, well, this is what's on the radio. I'm telling them this is what's on the radio. This is what people are liking. I don't sound like him. I don't sound like that one. He's like, the world don't need another so-and-so in this one and that one. They need to be brown. So I'm like, all right, let's keep going. So what sets me apart is my voice. Um, maybe I like to say integrity, and that's not shots at anyone in the business, no. but we see what, what goes on. That's true. <laughs> we see. Um, uh, I, I try to do this with a bit of tact and integrity. Um I do it because I like it. I love it. Uh -huh. And I I don't ever want to crap on the craft. That's true. You're right. So there's probably a lot of people who don't. There's a lot of people who just throw anything out there. I'm still very particular. You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not a big budget artist signed to a major label, but I'm still very particular and I want to take my time. Okay. All right. I don't see a problem with that. Now, since you um, did answer that music question, I want to know right there. And also, let everybody know about the current single you have that 
came out not too long ago called Middle of the Road. Is it Middle of the Road we call it? Yes, Middle of the Road. Uh, that is from, that's going to be on, I don't know if that's going to be on the album. I'm going to put it on anyway. <laughs> that's going to be on the forthcoming album called It's Complicated. And that, that, That's the newest single he got out right now, just in case if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. So that yes, Middle of the Road is available for streaming, downloading, and purchasing on all platforms from Apple, Spotify, Amazon, uh, um, crap. All of them. Wherever you buy music, All it's going to be there. He's saying it. <laughs> yes, it's going to be there. Wherever you buy music, it's there. So, um, but yeah, Middle of the Road is, um, I think I got the name from um, one word that was like in a, I can't remember what I was looking at. Was it an ad? Or I think when I was actually searching for tracks on a site, and I'm like, you know what? Let's see what I can do with this. And I think we've all been there at some point or another in life with it being a relationship, being a job, um, just existing, period. Um, hey, Ryan. <laughs> he says, my ish. Um, we've all been there at some point. Yeah, that's good old Ryan. Um, but we've all been there at some point in some way or another where it's just like, you know what? Have I given this all I got? If I'm I'm about to leave, but I'm stuck in the middle. If I go, then this will happen. If I stay, then this will happen. So, it's like a um, it's one of those those songs. It's like where where do we go from here? Okay. It's like you know, just just take it. In the end, just take it. Have you thought about doing a visual, like a music video to it yet, or is it still like the early process right now? Absolutely, I, I have. Um, I'm probably going to enlist the help of. A choreographer who helped me with my last video, um, Get You Off My Mind. It was, um, like I said, because of Rona, we had to keep it small. We had to, yeah, we had to keep everything small. And, um, you know, we shot it. There was supposed to be lots of dancers, not just her and I together. I I just come up with a, a plan. But yeah, I said, you know, this is what we're going to do. You know, one monkey, no stop, no show. We got to do this, Monica. So shout out to Miss Monica Florette. Um, yeah, so we made that come together, and I might actually enlist her help again. Um, hopefully, get some more people. Hey, Miss Stevie, that's Miss Stevie. We'll catch you. Let me catch up. Let's give Miss Stevie a shout out because if it wasn't for Miss Stevie here, we wouldn't even be friends at all. Absolutely, Miss 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 Stevie. Cross. Yes, Miss Stevie keeps it real, like her name. <laughs> Very much. We love you so much. We love but, you, um, and we see you. Terrence. Sorry about that. And Terrence. Hey, Terrence. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. The Fashion Dolls right. crew is here. <laughs> <laughs> we see them. But um, go ahead. Would you finish saying what you were saying? Yeah, so, like, I, I really hope and pray nothing else gets in the way. And hopefully we'll be able to do it bigger this time. Um, although it's a, a song with that type of message. Um you know, I don't. I don't want to be in the video like, oh my god, where do we go from here? I want to make this one. It's <laughs> it's still it's still a great uh, track that you can bop to a little bit. So you know, I once again, I want to try and step out the box and do something that I don't normally do. I'm part of the rhythmless nation, but I mean, I can <laughs> I can learn a good eight count if you if got you patience. Have, that's, that's good for you. you can't go like how everybody else is doing. It's just because somebody else does a thing like that, it's a different thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you're gonna be good. Yeah, I hope so. So I mean yeah, if I'm I'm gonna put that notice out there pretty soon. So anybody in Philly or Jersey, if y'all see this, when that notice goes out, please respond. Um I'm stepping all kinds of dancers, all 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 shapes, sizes and types, um, male and female. We're we're gonna have a good time with this one this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Since we got into the music and we got into the acting, well, we went to the long resume of acting, then we went to the music. Any, anything else you aspire to do for this year? Or goals um, you wanna... I am um, taking another, um, I guess, unconventional, not unconventional, but I've been told by my engineer, this is the new way. People are dropping singles and singles and singles and EPs here and there. So um, after it's complicated, I'm actually dropping a collaboration with my cousin Mimi JK. 
That one is called Situations. Um, that's for grown folk who um, who find themselves in situations, you know, situationships and breakups and makeups. Uh, it, that's going to be some good old-fashioned R&B. What a, what a little bit of the, the new stuff here and there for y'all. Um, so that's Situations. And uh, um, another EP is it's a little, I haven't decided, I haven't locked in on a title yet. That's also going to be something outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> but, hey, you know, we got to go there. Hey, keep got to get a few what they want, you know? And I had a talk with um, uh, Aaron Thomas, if y'all know who he is. Um, know. You know Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> I had a talk with Aaron Thomas about this particular project. So um, we're going to make that one nice and nice. And, uh, nice yeah, because nice. Aaron's going to bring out the best in you. Yeah, yeah, but Aaron, Aaron can go there. <laughs> he oh, go uh, there. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. I know how he is when it comes to, when it comes to yeah. music. Yeah, so he's like, don't be scared. Just, you know, like somebody finds all that sex, you better give people what they what they need in their life, you know? That sounds like, <laughs> like that, that sounds like him. That definitely sounds like him. Yeah, like don't hold yeah, back. Good. Like just have fun with it. Be now let me ask you one. Possible. Let me ask you this question. Who are some of your musical influences that you listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of Tony Braxton. I listen to I listen to all the the greats. I guess all the legends that ain't here anymore. I still listen to Luther Whitney. Um, some who are here still. Uh, Freddie. I grew up on that that eighties and nineties R and B. Um, and my eldest sister, she's a great singer. I probably wouldn't have tried to open my mouth and sing if I ain't here. I'm like, oh, wow, she can do that. I'm going to do that, too. Follow him right behind her. <laughs> and uh, we grew up on the Shirley Murdochs. Uh, you had uh, Melba Moore. You had, um, going into the 90s, there was there was Shantae Moore, Mariah Carey, um, uh, Keith Sweat, I'll be sure, all the new edition, um, some 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 very great singers. But I, st I still play play Tony Braxton out like I I'm sure my my partner, my child wanna leave. <laughs> like as soon as they hit, like, oh God, her again. We're getting in the car. Oh God, not Tony again. Yes, Tony Braxton again. <laughs> and the, her love and her, and her flowers because you know how people are in the case. Yes, absolutely. But um and I love Jasmine Sullivan too. Jasmine yes. Sullivan, um Brandy, Monica. Yeah, um, I love Monica. Yeah. Some all all those those R and B people that the, the legends. <laughs> no, because you brought up some legends. Because you no, know, because a lot of people don't know my cousin was the late Betty Wright. Man, when I tell you my heart, my heart dropped. Um, my condolences once again. Like I, I can't. I couldn't deal. And like I said, that we were just losing and losing and losing so many people last year. It was yeah, just when she, even though she's my cousin, I was so in shock because I talked to her, you know, probably like six days before, you know, on my birthday last year. Mm -hmm. So I understand because they're because I know I taught my cousins her kids, so whew, it was something else. Hey, Tony. We see you. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, I mean, we, she was she was a extraordinary entertainer to the world, but that that's family to you. So I'm so sorry. She she's um Dog. she's a, a energy that's missed out here in this in this music world. Yeah, but trust me, when you can hear her kids and mm -hmm. her uh, grandson, my cousin equally talented. Yeah. No, trust me. Everybody have their that, own. That, that, oh. You want that to no man and no pain, no gain. She, she, it was effortless. It was crazy. Trust me. I'm gonna try and get them on. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get them on here. So maybe you'll see them interview or whatever. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> That's everybody need on because I know a lot of people probably didn't know that fact. Now you know that fun fact from me. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, there's um there's one more thing I, I said I'm I'm not gonna forget this. I'm actually co writing a musical here called Awoke. Really? Yes. Um one more collaboration with um Run Boy Run Productions. Um shout out to Miss Karen Smith and Alan Clark. They're the writers and the uh producers for this. And um 
And so I'm co-writing a lot of the songs on there and um, performing as well in the ensemble. So um, that, that is supposed to, it was actually supposed to hit stages last October, but wrong. <laughs> so we're going to do it this, this year. Yes, that damn wrong. We're going to do it this year, no matter what, be it virtual or a small audience plus virtual. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, wherever the venue, uh, if it holds up to the, that capacity, we'll start to sell the digital tickets and it will, it will go on that way. Okay. Um, and Evoke is basically about um, the whole pipeline system, grooming uh, minority children from the classrooms to the prison systems and oh, how we need to make it stop, um, open our eyes to, to, uh, systemic racism, um, police brutality, um, uh, our, our race being targeted, period, from um, all genders as well, from hetero to gay, lesbian, bi, trans. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're targeted at an early age and we're not groomed, we're not supported to, to make different decisions you know we'll, we we still end up getting caught up in this like you know wait when when are we gonna wake up so y'all look out for awoke this october okay now if anybody has any questions for v brown you can uh write, see the little bubble that has a question um have the question um icon on there you can write it on there and don't we'll get, be we'll, we'll, get, we'll get v to um to answer it because I know V is dying to know what questions you're going to ask him. <laughs> and you got to have, have somebody that, that was all nervous and shy and everything. <laughs> you know, after a while, it, it, it shakes off a little bit. <laughs> he, was a little he was talking all this crap the last time I had somebody doing a live about singing. He you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who was that? About. I forgot. I don't know if it was Del Royale or somebody. Yeah, yeah, talking, yeah. Talking all that smack, and now, now since we got you up, we got you up on this uh, live now. You see what I'm talking about? You now you got a question from my boy Chris saying, "If you could have five artists to do it with, who would they be?" <laughs> well, if you heard me earlier, you know number one is going to be Tony Braxton. <laughs> um, Tony Braxton. Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, who else is here? Um, crap. Brandy. Mm -hmm. Shante Moore. Mm -hmm. And there's someone new. Gibeon. Oh my God. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his. That I like his voice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Gibeon, I love his music. Yeah, I I, re I respect the the husky voices and 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 the ones that sound different. You know, he's definitely yeah. got bringing a, a different energy to R and B. So yeah, it, it would be those five people off the top of my head. Yeah. yeah, that good question, Chris. I like that. That was a really good, great, great, great yeah, question. It made me think a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I like wow, because I didn't even I was thinking in my head, but I was like I didn't know that was really a good question because I want to. Do the same question over and over because I do it. So, you know what? I, you've seen the interviews I've done. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Get a fresh start. If anybody else, <laughs> feel free to ask the questions to me. Ooh. Hey, Alex Jante, we see you. Alex, you and I need to talk about doing one of these interviews too. We're gonna set that up soon. Just let me know when you're available, and I'll let you know when I'm available. Also, there's some I can't name it yet, but um. I just want to say Atlanta, look out for your boy in April. Can't say what it is yet, but y'all gonna see it if you keep up with me, <laughs> if you follow me. I will like, follow I'll him. Atlanta. Follow, him. follow me too while you guys are watching this. Or wait yes. till after. Follow, follow, follow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, that's just my little baby. Questions. So now since you feel comfortable with everything, did, is this kind of like, how does it feel now being, you know, being interviewed? Because I know you so used to being behind, you know, being in the comments. How does it feel now for you? <laughs> it's always awkward. Like, you, you, I, I, um, 
I do I do some interviewing myself. Um, I was supposed to get this thing rolling again on YouTube. Uh, there's a podcast that my cousin and I do uh, called Sit Down with V. Brown. And I was supposed to get that off the ground uh, last year again and at the top of this year. But, you know, plans just take a take a U-turn somewhere. So yeah. I, I, I like interviewing people more than being interviewed. Absolutely. <laughs> Some new people to interview, you know, you can hit me up. Yes. Yes, I will. I will. I will tell them to hit you up, please. Because uh, yeah, they they drop some new stuff. They, yeah, they, they I, I, I got you. I got you channel with your uh, V Brown. I got your. I subscribe to yours. So I, that's how I found Middle of the Road. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and it's doing so good. I, I want to thank everybody that is streaming it. Um, yeah, let it's me know the, how many streams you got. It's the fastest streaming single that I've put out thus far. Um, it's, it's probably small to some people, but I mean, I'm just getting here. So I, I humbly, humbly accept the 6,000, over 6,000 strings on Spotify in, in just a week. Uh, I remember the last, the last single I put out, it probably took next close to a month to reach that. And like, that was, that was last year. Yeah. Last year. So I'm, I'm actually halfway halfway there to the total amount that my last single actually put, actually stream total <laughs> so well, we gonna put we gonna keep positivity and put keep that going up listen i want to grab me before i die y'all <laughs> help me get there <laughs> help me get there <laughs> no, you know people now winning grammys absolutely it's it's a great thing that we have this kind of technology um a lot of people will be like you know well where was where is this going long, 15 but... years ago Praise. You know? Yes, praise. <laughs> but a lot of people probably think like, where was this energy 15 years ago? Didn't have the technology, the freedom, the nerve 15 years ago mm -hmm. to, to attempt such a thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was always about who you know. There's people who, um, there's there's famous singers who had to pay their dues uh, years um, hanging around studios, sleeping in the studios, just to bum a session off somebody doing any and everything to be heard. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, a uh, shout out to great Philly artist, Jill Scott, who shared some yeah. info. My son, she doesn't mind me saying it if she ever sees it, but um, she gave him, she sent me some info for him to put into a book report for Black History Month. And okay. I didn't know Jill Scott, the extraordinary talent that she is, had to clean toilets in studios and things like that before she got into a booth, before people like people like her had to pay their dues back mm -hmm. in 1990-something. Give them a moment, you guys. Early 90s yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. All right, you there, V? All right. I am still here, but you are frozen. Okay. Now, I think we'll be good now. Be good okay. now. But it looks like nobody else had any questions. No I know questions. You know you're a new artist and everything. Anything you anything you want to bring up that we haven't touched on or feel like you want to just promote or just talk about? You got the floor. Um, I'm also a brand ambassador. Um, I feel... Hold on. There is Ryan. Thanks. Hold on, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, but I'm also a brand, a brand ambassador for um, a great beer product. I don't know how it's looking on camera right now, but uh, it's called Melt Men, and you can find it on my page as well. Um, it's, a, it's a great product. I don't, I don't put everything on my skin, on my hair, and stuff like that. And forgive my hair right now. I'm on the in-between. I'm about to try something different <laughs> before this, uh, this next well, round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all caught me on the in between. I'm gonna do something different on the next round of promo photos and stuff like that. So just bear with me, y'all. Y'all get into this crown right here. He's still a king, which y'all talking about. Um, <laughs> but for, off that, off that music soul child vibe right there. <laughs> but uh, Meltman uh, beard products. It's a beard balm in oil and body butter. Um, smells great. It doesn't smell like you know super perfumey it's all natural like you can eat it you could it's so natural you could eat it but you should not eat it um <laughs> what else uh 
Uh, so I'm I'm looking to be a brand ambassador for anyone. If you, I love sneakers. I love shoes. I love sunglasses. I love uh, beard care products. If you got any, um, send them my way. Send them my way. All righty. Now let's get into the question that Ryan asked right there, saying, um, "Do you feel that neo soul that that neo soul movement is still going on in Philly?" No. No. Philly is um. <laughs> I want I want to say this without uh downplaying my city um cuz I still got to live here. No. <laughs> um but that neo soul movement is um in Philly has it, it it went probably about a good almost 10 years ago. Uh-huh. Sadly, um people got away from the creativity and the vibe that Neo Soul once brought. Neo Soul brought about a nostalgia and yeah. uh, a togetherness of of artists. So like if you if you had met up at say oh what was the place? Um and dear, you can help me out. <clears throat> Excuse me, um Salon Elevations. Where did where did all the folks used to go down Not, South Street? It wasn't Black Lily, was it? Yes, yes. There was Black Lily. There was um there was, I think, times that the Zanzibar would open up. Um, there was just so many small places that you can gather. Um, great open mics. You could you could bring a drum and your voice. You could bring your canvas while someone sang. You could all that stuff. They're not they're not doing that no more. They're I riding this wave of ratchetness. I think it's because of the whole what you know, especially with COVID and everything. And I think also with the open mics and everything now, it's like open mics, everybody's kind con- and no disrespect, nobody does open mics because I've gone to a couple open mics, they be doing their thing. But mm-hmm. I feel like some people are kind of trying to do the same thing. But I feel like if we want the originality, we have to bring forth the creativity of it. Hopefully that makes sense to anybody watching this live. Exactly. If you want open mics and everything to be successful, let's do something new. Let's do something different. Let's do something where it's a common environment. And that's not the typical thing. Cause they think of our people, we have to do everything up in a club, you know, up in a club. Mm-hmm. Let's just get an environment where we, it could just be for that. Yeah, and we ain't, we ain't knocking nobody, not knocking nobody for shaking not your head, high, having a good time. If that's what you enjoy, mm-hmm. enjoy yourself. But that can't be it. That can't be all that you got to offer. There you go. See, you get where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you know where I'm coming from when I say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there there has to be more than that to offer. Let's get back to real singers. Speaking of real singers, what's up, Aviator Shizzy? (laughs) I appreciate you. Aviator Shizzy actually co-wrote one of the songs with me on my my EP, the first EP, called Love. Oh, we need to talk. I need to see how you do, too. Yes, Aviator Shizzy, he got some some stuff out there. Man, you think... Right here, he's he saying he's middle of the road. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Anybody that's on here that's an upcoming that's independent or whatever, hit your boy up. Let me hear some of the stuff y'all got going on. Maybe we can do some interviews, help you guys out, can your uh, projects out. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. Promote, promote, promote. He, we, up. he was all shy <laughs> trying to hit me up. He know he <laughs> hit me. He was all- <laughs> <laughs> I, I said we gonna talk when, when I got something to talk about. I guess yeah. <laughs> put it out there because he hit me up, mind you. By the way, you guys, we are we're friends and everything, but he hit me up. He was kind of nervous, mm-hmm. saying that. Oh, <laughs> you think you could put me on? You think uh, we could do an interview? So I'm just like, we could do one. He was nervous because yeah. he thought I was gonna he thought I was gonna shut him down, and I don't do that. I was like, yeah, he, you have done all these big names already. I'm like, oh, God. they're gonna turn. Oh, they're gonna turn like, who is this? Yes. Come on, you know this. <laughs> yeah. But see, but look what happened. We made it happen, and I was a man of my word. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And we have a good time doing it. Exactly. See, people don't see the side of us because we're actually on camera together at the same time. Mm-hmm. They get to see this is how we interact with each other. Yes. I'm, listen, I'm a goofball. And everyone on here who knows me <laughs> knows that. As far as I am, you guys. I know sometimes I come across very serious, but I'm a goofball at times. <laughs> oh, I want to ask you. That trophy behind your head, yeah. whose is that? <laughs> I always wanted to ask you that. Oh, that's mine. That's, one of, that's from when I was a child. Nice. 
I said that trophy is always there. So well, somebody has to leave. You got to show some accomplishments. That's not from no K two spot interview yet. Now that goes on. You know you gonna see that more often right there. Uh huh. When you see the K two spot getting awarded on something, then trust me, I'm gonna I'm put it right up there with pride mm -hmm. and joy. Absolutely. Trust yes. me, from all the stuff I've done, he, somebody just re really asked me. That. It's funny. You're the sec. You're the second person to ask me that question. Mm -hmm. Not about the trophy, but. You know, just talking about what does it mean, or you got any other awards or anything? Because mm -hmm. you know how it would be in a small YouTuber and everything. Yeah. Trust me, you do what you have to do to survive. Oh my gosh, the YouTube hustle is something else. Like, I, I watch all these tutorials and, and try to get the hang of it, but it's um, it's I, a lot. Yeah, I'm going to need to hire somebody just for that period. <laughs> it's a Because even though we're on IG right now, trust me, anything I put on the interviews you've all seen, and just everybody that's watching this. Any interview you've seen on Instagram TV and Instagram Live, it goes on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So that way you get double exposure. There be right, right. So yeah, I got some videos on YouTube as well. Uh, the video from the first EP that's um, Love is Love, one, one with you. Yeah, love from Love is Love, one with you. I did a video for that. Um, <laughs> what a day that was! It was so hot. <laughs> It was it was hot in September, mm -hmm. and it was one of those things I thought was going to fall apart. People running late. I was late. Everybody was late. Um, we didn't get a food. I had ordered some food. that came kind of late, and um, one of the young ladies like, it, it's so funny. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I put out a casting for that. Okay. Um, I wanted to get a, a gay male couple to portray, you know, or or straight whatever uh, a male couple to portray gay men who are getting married. Okay. Um, oh, you doing a different love theme of it all? I got you. Right, right. And I was shocked that I had such a lackluster response. I said, "Well, what is it?" And I and I made it all inclusive. Like it didn't matter the race. It didn't. I, I said all sizes. Um, I said, "Wow, that that was surprising." I said, maybe there's some people out there who just ain't ready. Or if it's, yeah, if it's just, you know, be, me being unknown. But there's lots of new people who put out these casting calls in our city. And, you know, the response is like, boom. So I don't know. Maybe it was just a subject that some people just didn't feel like they could they could do, even if that is who they are, mm -hmm. genuinely. So I that like shocked me. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with, because you know what's so funny? When you hear casting calls, everybody wants to get the mainstream, and people have to realize mainstream is a, it's amazing. We're not knocking nobody doing mainstream. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you do the independent route and you go ahead and get away from mainstream but still trying to get your voice across, some people don't, don't see it because of the way everything is being portrayed. That's what I think. Especially from everything you see me do with a K2 spy, like especially – on YouTube and then doing the lives and everything on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's tough because you get people who you may think, because a lot of people, they look at me thinking, oh, you got this and that. No, I had to work hard to do everything because I don't have nobody, I don't have no team. Only person you see booking, you know, getting all the different the different guests and everything, all that's me. Putting together the promo. Yeah. yeah the yeah. promo fire, that's all me. Exactly. Was I paying them? Um, Good question. There is, from this particular area that I posted, there's probably 80% of these gigs that are not paid. Mine was not paid as well. But I was supplying food. It was almost sort of sponsored from a little hookup. Um, so nobody was hungry. <laughs> um, you know, and, and that was it. They, they weren't even needed for the entire day. Like, they, I had to be there for B-roll, stuff like that. If you know how shooting these videos go, yes. um, I needed a couple and someone to play a preacher. That's it for our maximum. I and, there's, and there's people who I know personally, I've, I've gone to unpaid sets with my peers in this city. And we're there for 10 hours. But just like this, just happy I'm here. I got to be on set with so and so and so and so. I I think it's because of the way we're 
because we are because we want our money twisted. We, he's not saying he don't want any money, but what he means because I'm not trying to cut you off because I know I want to make sure what you're saying and mm -hmm. how you present it is the right way. Even though I know you don't know present yourself correctly, but sometimes some people have to realize everything is not you're not gonna get paid every time you do a thing, a project, or like a shoot. Because sometimes, like he said, you have to start from the bottom, right. And realize that when you start from the bottom and you gradually keep growing and evolving, right. you'll get the money. But don't expect right. money to make like how they said, um, uh, what's the movie Players Club? You make that money, but don't let it make don't you. Let it make you exactly. And as I said, there were there were other production companies who posted in these particular areas, and they're more well known. These people have the money, but they're not paying. That's true. <laughs> Here I am, a new artist. Because we're in a lot of different stuff, like people not paying, uh, especially like when you saw the um, interview I did with John Robinson, she admits she wasn't getting paid like from, you know, from what she was doing in Vogue. Listen, I couldn't believe it. I and believe that. That, um, Lucy Pearl, she wasn't getting paid for that. And she, she in, in Vogue, the original in Vogue, and that's no shape, but that the original in Vogue lineup, they were dynamic. They exactly. were dynamic. And to to hear everyone's side is just like it did it have to be that way? And like, I think that's why you see what John she had because remember they silenced her. And mm -hmm. I think you gotta realize you're gonna get silenced, but at the same time your truth will come out. It was gonna you have your redemption and vindication of getting your point across. And it will come because you know how they say when you if you put out good energy, you get what you put out there. If you put out great energy. Hey, hey, Asher. That's one of um, my cousin Betty Wright's daughters right there that you see in the comments right there. Say, well, Asher hello, Ms. Uh, Asher. <laughs> yeah, that's one of her. I, that's one. Your mother. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry she's no longer with us. I loved her. But she good. She's doing good, trust mm -hmm. me. She's very happy to sing her yeah. butt off. Okay, cuz, I see you on here. No, but that's just what the point where we're trying to say with John Robinson and just like when we talk about people talking about the pay gigments, you know, like mm -hmm. they're what they're trying to do, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. But that's mm -hmm. what we try to get at when, we, you make, when V's making this point. Yeah, so I guess it was all about the, the notoriety or the, the lack of that I probably had at that moment. Yeah. But yet and still, I hear people speaking out for the need for inclusiveness. Like, let, let everyone be all inclusive, uh, no matter the shape, the size, and, and, and um, your, your gender or your sexual preference. Like, make everything all inclusive because we don't have these outlets. There's a lot of opportunities I missed out being a large man. And I'm like, I did a better job than whoever else was in that room with me. Um, so there, there's, it's like, if you're not having, if, if no one gives you the seat at the table, you make your own table. And that's what I call myself doing, I'm trying to make my own table. Since there's, there's blockage and this and that and the other, if people don't understand my brand or where I'm coming from, my own way. There we go. Now, now we going now let's conclude this right here because you know we kind of give a lot of tea and a lot of yeah, interesting we stuff that? right there. Okay. We get a lot of info right here. Let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Well, please let them know. That's what I should say. Please let them know where they can find you on social media. Um, I don't do much social media. You can find me right here on, on Instagram at V Brown Actor Singer. I'm trying to have a better social media presence. Y'all bear with me. <laughs> he got a Twitter too, y'all. He just don't want to tell y'all. He just don't be on it that much. Oh yeah. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> What's the Twitter? You probably know better than I do. Um, I am. I think it was what I am. I am. <laughs> it's I a, I the am letter, I, the letter I. I, I, I gotta do my research it's on I everybody. <laughs> it's oh, I, I am B Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Brown. Come on. He being all shy and modest, y'all. I'm just trying to keep, uh, keep lighting it up and make sure we keep it funny with it. <laughs> but that, that's how you find them. But mostly you can get them on Instagram, so that way you guys will know. 
And let them know that, and also yes. you can subscribe to You can um, YouTube subscribe channel. to me, inbox me. Inbox him. Yes, subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel. channel. Subscribe to mine, which is it's um, all under second. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at K2s, which you guys see the name on here, K2s. So that way you guys will know. And subscribe to my channel, like I said. The, the Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Just find him at V Brown. But you can look, really, if you do a search for V Brown, that's how I found you on YouTube. And then if you go for me for K2, so if you go on my bio on my Instagram mm -hmm. or my Twitter, it has my YouTube link. So that way everybody can subscribe and you push that bell icon. So that way you got y'all get VIP access to every time I drop these videos and these, you know, these music reviews, these um, interviews. So that way nobody will be the first to be like, I don't know how to get it or you get it. And that way we can watch it, support, comment, like. Does she like his stuff too? That's awesome. I'm finally searchable on YouTube. <laughs> it's only a year later, YouTube. It's well, no, when, when you put the search in for your name, just going on the search for YouTube, you put V Rob, but I put the song middle of the row. Okay. It pulled up on everything. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Anywho, y'all. Be brown out, we're gonna bounce you guys. But we thank you so much for watching this live. If you missed it, it'll be like you said, it's on YouTube. We'll be watching YouTube. You guys know where it was on Instagram. So that's all we have to say. So we thank you. Oh so my much. gosh, we have to go already. Damn. Yes, we have to go. <laughs> I think he's so silly, y'all. I told you he's silly. <laughs> but V Brown, I thank you so much for um accepting the invite of coming on the K2 spot. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate you so much. He come back out with some other projects. Trust me, we'll get him back again. Absolutely. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. We're out. We thank you so much. So bye, bye, y'all. Bye.